Welcome to China Horse Business, the one and only podcast focusing on the booming Chinese equine market, bringing to you by two experts of Chinese equine industry, Zoe King and Wen Li from Shanghai and Beijing, introducing China to the world. Good morning, Wen. How's it going? Good morning. Beijing is rapidly turning from spring to summer in two weeks, from zero degree to as high as twenty degrees Celsius. Wow, what a roller coaster! Shanghai is already hotter than Beijing. Now let's tell our listeners what do we have for China news today. On February twenty eighth, Chinese question writer Alex Huatian saved a big win to start big year after claiming gold medal in Italy. Alex will go for glory at September's Asian Games in Hangzhou and is also bidding to book a spot on Team China's roster for next year's Paris Olympics. Yes. Alex said, "Such an important year, and so happy to start with an international level four win. There's a lot to do this year with individual and team Olympic qualifications, as well as the Asian Games. And it is a huge relief that all of my, my horses, and team's hard work over the winter is paying off." Alex ranked second after February 27th research competition and maintained that position after February 28th morning show jumping round. But a better than expected performance in the cross country saw the 33-year-old overtake Dutch rider Sander de Ron at the CCI Level 4 event. Alex credited his horse Jorson van Berhoff, aka Chucks, for the victory. All right, in our China Club session. We will introduce you the crafty pony Wan Omashu, a British brand that sells soft toy pony with realistic walking tag and an educational booklet finds its way to China. Crafty ponies were founded in 2010, and in order to find out whether toy ponies they made are liked by people or not, they participate in the Little Pony Live Show. At the same, people like those toys very much, though not everyone. Meanwhile, the toy pony sewing kit entered a toy and games competition and was highly commended in the Creative Play Awards. In 2013, Karen Darren, the company's founders, came to China to secure a manufacturing chain to transform from small-scale handcraft to large-scale flow production. Later, the brand was recommended by Chinese Equestrian Association and supports a large number of equestrian competitions, especially for young riders. All right, for our China story today, one interview a famous horse racing journalist in Hong Kong, Bart Wenders. Let's hear it out. Hey Bart, long time no see. I guess the last time we saw each other is about、uh, I guess four years ago at Songhua for the exhibition race day at Songhua Racecourse. Wow, it's yes, it's really a long time, man. <laughs> yeah, I heard about there is a second uh, uh, exhibition race day coming up. It's in 2015, I think. Maybe、uh, hope、yeah. sooner. I think you have big、uh, just club have big plans for that. Yeah, but after 2015, I think they would do have racing regularly in Chongfu. Yeah,、That's、so I heard. I heard. Great. So and、uh, to the viewers and listeners who don't know you, first of all, please give us a brief introduction about you and how do you enter the equa industry and、uh, what do you do now as a horse professional. So I I get into this in、uh, in July 1997.、Uh, first,、uh, I just joined joining a new Newspaper as a racing reporter, try to report the news and、uh, the, the horse racing news to cover it. And、uh, but as as time go went by, I get more experience and get more knowledge. And then I start to do some other things. And、uh, just like、uh, I was a jockey's agent in in Macau, and I buy and selling horses. And also I write、uh, writing articles in other newspaper and magazine. And now I go to some. I'm I'm a host in、uh, on on YouTube for some racing show and race people. Real shows for overseas races, so just go many different ways going now.、Uh, great, I, I know that you have、um, the show come up in a few hours, right? Yes, the overseas preview show for Dubai Super Saturday. Yes,、so、yes, the Super Saturday, the first G、uh, G one races for the Emirates Racing Calendar. Yes, actually,、yeah. this year is not very good. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'll cut it out.、On. Yeah, it's a pep. It's a Biggest day before the Dubai World Cup day, right? So、yeah. we need to do a preview、yeah. show for that. I remember the first overseas race I covered, I commented on was two twenty sixteen Dubai Racing Carnival. It is a great races. It it is great, but right now we I think 
just like I, I said to other press, there is an emergence of the uh, Middle East circuit right now. You see Qatar, mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, yeah. they all try to have their races now. And uh, I think later on, you see a huge circuit. I think maybe starting in January to March, I think it turns to, turns to really great with a lot of stakes money. And the race standard will keep going up, I think. Great. So the first three months, you have that great races right before the flat season kickoffs in Europe. I would guess so. That's what I foresee. Yes. So since about the whole Hong Kong racing as well, can you tell us what has been achieved in Hong Kong racing over the past few? Yes. As we know, the last few years is the, the, the Hong Kong and everywhere in the world is hit, hitting hard by the COVID. But I, as far as I remember, Hong Kong is one of the first very first racing jurisdiction to carry on closed door racing to keep the racing going on at least to keep at least keep the people's working and keep the yeah. racing or for so as many countries have a bad turnovers going on first. It is it, it is important too because it is for the fight for the survival of many racing jurisdictions. Yeah. And also, they push forward the idea of the world pool. First, we have the commingling for the Hong Kong racing. But now they develop a one step further to have a world pool, just like Hong Kong will become a hub to accept all the bettings from all around the world for some overseas yeah. races. Just like they're helping the Royal Ascot to, to have the world pool. Mm -hmm. it, helped, it helped their partners be a lot, actually. Especially, I think the Royal Ascot, they benefit a lot from the world pool. And then they start to develop to Ireland and mm -hmm. many different country right now. South Africa, I think these, these, these two should be the internationally the greatest achievement for the Hong Kong Jockey Club in recent years where the racing is attacked by the COVID. Uh, but for locally, I think the racing still keep going on and uh, facing many challenges now because we are not a breeding country. Uh, we are, all the horses are import, but uh, overseas, the horse price is getting uh, way, way, way expensive. But uh, Jockey Club have to put a lot of incentive, have to put a lot of increased stakes money to attract the owners and trainers, try to get good horses to come to Hong Kong. Otherwise, the Hong Kong racing standards is going to get down. But so far, everything is still okay. Great. As you said, Woodfu is very beneficial to Hong Kong Jockey Club and other jurisdictions in other places. And I yeah. understand Woodfu is a hot topic in the past few Asian racing conference. I think uh, Andrew Harding or the chairman have to say something, a long speech about Woodfu. Uh, since you just came back from this year's yeah. Asian racing conference here. That's what happened or anything think, interesting in Melbourne. I think more cooperation is more important. I think with diff different racing jurisdictions, they find out actually, actually, uh, racing actually grow up during the COVID period in terms of horse population, even the betting turnover, because certain part of the of the betting industry, just like the casino has been die hard by it because of the COVID, it gives some chance for the racing industry and give many opportunities now in this COVID period, just like technologies, people need to put more attention on because, because of COVID, you know, people have to keep the distance. So they need to find out technology, how to keep the racing in contact with people. They give a lot of opportunity this period, but now COVID is gone. Now we need to see how we get county keep this opportunity and take this opportunity to go further for the development of racing. And uh, well, pool is still a main topic. And uh, we talk about how the techno technology and uh, how to just like on different aspects, just like the, how the owners in, in after the new period, how to, how to keep the relation between the owners, how different hunters and also customers. It's, it's an overall review and a uh, discussion because there are many things we talk about, but the, the main theme on that is the opportunities that is ahead but all the parties to work together to, to go for it, to achieve a bigger goal for that oh yes and uh i understand that uh overall the all sports in uh in other places like the sport soccer or basketball they are also facing a similar question how to attract new fans new spectators i think this is for the horse racing as well anything has been discussed there's a topic there's a topic they they have a guy for the the site they, they have the, the study of generation Gen Z is called, right? Mm -hmm. Generation Z, the new generation. Yeah. How they how, how they usually behave here, how they put, <laughs> how, how how they behave, how the mentality, which is very different from us, I'm getting old, you yeah. know. <laughs> but 
that what they what what he said is quite different from us. You know, we I never think of a kids like that in this period of time. You know, but how to attract those people to get involved with, in racing will be a hot, will be a main topic is coming up. You know, it's not easy for judging the way they act. <laughs> but um, <laughs> it's it's a it's a huge task. But uh, but this is something we need to do to attract the young people. Those people they get used to you know everything is digital. Yeah, they don't go out. They they do everything <laughs> online. But how they reach out to them to go to see the horses, the owner horses, or get involved in racing is a is is the main topic is coming up in the next few years, I think. Mm-hmm. And we have a discussions on that. It's it's very complicated actually because I I seldom hear young people act like this right now. You know, I'm I, I feel surprised too because there's a generation gap between me and them. But uh, it's it's yeah. quite fresh topic. It's it's a good one. The things in here is like you have to check the young fans. I think a lot of uh, new racing fans in mainland China. Now they're they're getting the information from the Japanese ACG called the Pretty Derby. They have season one and two. They're coming a season three about uh, famous race horses like uh, Suzuka. Something a, a lot of new fans are obsessed with the show. So they learn about uh, about the racing in, in Japan, and later on they can watch race in Hong Kong, Macau, and they, some some of them even pay visit to Hanau Yulong. Samanian, the the Chinese name is Samanian. The English name is the Pretty Derby. I think amazing. That's- amazing you know? yes it's a cartoon they they like that it's like the horses but they all appear like uh, teenage girls yes and also i guess the japanese before has done a lot in this marketing to attract young people they do a lot of work too before i uh, many years ago i interviewed them that's why you see those cartoon tv games uh, all actually helped by the jr japanese racing association actually they want to get the interest of the young people to try to get involved in racing and so far I think they did a good job but still a lot of things to do because the racing population is getting aged actually is, is, is there's a fact you know but we need to do more but Japanese has done a lot uh, Jockey Club try to do something but still do, it, it, is, it is something that's ne- never been easy too many competition and the kids like they like many different things like football and, uh, and different different type of sports now you know it's a, it's a very different thing too so it's, it's, it's a hard work but we need to keep trying yeah it's a attention business everyone trying to get the new ones uh, attention that means money yes yes but I think if attract the, the race fan in China may be a little bit different because they don't have that past history of whole horse, horse racing you know for Hong Kong people or even Jeff, some Japanese people horse racing is some old thing yeah just like the, the kids nowadays think about race Facebook they think it's old TikTok is a new one okay yeah it's similar like that but the horse racing fan in china maybe is different because before they don't have they don't they don't be watched by those been, been those racing you know so racing is still new to them maybe they can attract more ease interest is easier for them i think yeah there may be one thing can be done about how to attract the young fans in mainland china get them into liking horse racing and even paying visit to race courses that won't be easy because there is not as um um highly developed as the industry in hong kong or or maybe you can org- uh, organize more tour to come to Hong Kong or come to other countries to to watch racing. Yeah, or, that, that could be done. That could be done after the the restrictions are lift off. I think that can be done this year. It'll be it'll be nice, you know. <laughs> With- I, I joined a tour before they bring me to Shadai Farm in Japan. It'll be mm-hmm. it's wonderful, you know, to see all the all the stallions, see all the training farms. It, it'll be it'll be wonderful for them to 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 have have a first first look and all, all, mm-hmm. also all those behind the racing industry. It'll be good. So I will leave it at that. <laughs> I think I get a lot from this one for the viewers. So I will leave it at that and uh, thank you, Bart, and help to invite you back to the show. It's my pleasure. Thanks a lot. This is the 21st episode of Season 3. Please leave a comment wherever you listen to this podcast as your feedback is how we can make it better. The next Mansley Chan Horse Business Live is coming. Yes, the next webinar will take place on the 3rd of April from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Beijing time. See you in the next episode. Bye. Bye. This podcast is co-hosted by Zoe King and Wen Li, powered by Wonder Horse a business solution provider focusing on Chinese equine market and a bespoke equestrian community in China.